Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to talk about sewing with tricky fabrics. You know that sort of fabric that makes you want to give up sewing altogether, absolutely destroys your confidence and just makes you so frustrated. And yes, I think we've all encountered those tricky fabrics from time to time and in today's video I will share you some of my tips on how to deal with tricky fabrics. And first of all, when I talk about tricky fabrics, I perhaps should explain what I mean by that. And there are lots of different fabrics that are tricky, but they do have a few common traits. And one is that they're not really stable to sew. For instance, they tend to slip around, stretch out, they're usually very difficult to cut. For instance, if you have worked a lot with slippery silk or silk velvet, for instance, those kind of fabrics are really tricky to cut. And also, often quite difficult to sew and knit fabrics some of those can be absolutely dreadful to work with especially if they lack any type of stability so that they stretch out and perhaps even grow while you're working with the fabric because growing is another aspect that one needs to consider when you're working with tricky fabrics so I'm going to share some of my tips that I've learned the hard way and of course I'd love to hear your tips as well First of all, we're going to start off with the cutting bit. Now, my number one tip when it comes to cutting tricky fabrics is to always cut single layer. Never stack two layers on top of each other, never do a fold, just do one single layer of each pattern piece. That will absolutely make things so much easier. And that goes regardless if you're working, say, with um, silk chiffon, if you're working with um, striped knit fabric and well, pretty much any type of tricky fabrics. So that means obviously that if the pattern only has like half a back piece, then you need to draft a second back piece and piece them two together. You can also, of course, um, just cut for the first half and then, you know, put a little notches and then fold over the second piece to the back and cut it out. That's an option if you don't want to do it, but when you're working with really tricky fabrics, I definitely think it's worth doing that extra effort and add that second back piece. So never cut on fold, never double lace when working with tricky fabrics. And my second tip is to stabilize as soon as possible. Yes, you know a lot of tricky fabrics have a tendency of growing. You just can look at the fabric and it will sort of expand in front of your eyes. You know what type of fabrics I'm talking about, especially if they are cut slightly on the bias, for instance, the sleeve opening, the neckline, all that sort of things has a tendency to expand very quickly. So what you need to do is as soon as the fabric is cut, don't stop milling with it. Just head straight over to your sewing machine and stay stitched. I, uh, making um, a straight stitch uh, and just making sure to keep the fabric in check. You can also, of course, use water soluble uh, double sided tape such as Wonder Tape and also you can stabilize using fusible strips. There are lots of different options when it comes to stabilizing. It depends on the fabric and your own personal preference, but you definitely need to keep that fabric in check as soon as possible before you start doing any other thing with that project. And my third tip, which is one of those things that I personally struggle with still, but it's so important, and that is pick the right type of pattern for your tricky fabric. This is not the instance where you're going to go all out crazy and use, say, a slippery silk uh, charmeuse and, and try to make it into a very detailed um, shirt with a placard and a collar and a collar stand cuffs, all that sort of stuff, especially if you're not used to working with these type of fabrics. Start simple. I would much rather see that you do like um, a flowy tunic or some other type of simple patterns that doesn't involve a lot of darts. Darts is another thing that doesn't always jive with that. I have one of my own sewing nightmares, which was I did a fitted dress that had, I think, eight darts in silk velvet and that was an absolute nightmare to stitch so I, I have some made some really bad decisions in the past when it comes to that so if you're working as I said with that sort of silk velvet you know slippery silk chamois uh, all that sort of fabrics 
don't go crazy with the detailing. Now, I sometimes don't listen to my own advice. For instance, I'm actually wearing today a one of those experiments. This is um, a top made out of only rib cotton. So it's super stretchy, both fabrics. And I still decided to do a placket, uh, a collar and a collar stand. But it took me a lot of <laughs> hard work. And I think I used a combination of basting, uh, fusibles and water soluble wonder tape in order to make this happen because this is a very stretchy fabric uh, when before I started manipulating it so I'm not saying it can't be done but it's definitely not the sort of project that one should tackle especially one if one is newer to sewing for sure and another tip that I highly recommend when you're working with really tricky fabrics and are getting really frustrated with how things are going when you're using the sewing machine and that is why not try hand sewing because hand sewing gives you a lot more control uh, around the fabric it has a natural give in it because as you know when you're doing stretches with a sewing machine the fabric will be quite rigid and as I said those tricky fabrics are very flowing drapey stretchy and there is where hand sewing can absolutely play an important role for instance of course the obvious one is to baste that is often a very good idea when you work with this type of fabrics secondly when it comes to hemming that can also be a beast to tackle when you're working with these type of tricky fabrics so instead of trying to make um, a roll hem using your sewing machine becoming super frustrated with the drag lines and how it curls and all that stuff instead why not try to use a hand roll hem or a blind hem because Honestly, I think for the most part, yeah, it takes more time, but for the end result, you would probably end up with a much nicer looking garment if you have that type of struggles. Another option for hemming, obviously, is if you have a serger, you can also try using the roll hem stitch. That will also make this sort of hemming easier. But then again, you have to be aware that it would create a sort of a slightly wavy shape. So if that's the look we're going from, but I definitely recommend you know doing some hand sewing for instance if you're struggling with the zipper as well part of that if you have to do hand stitching that's not something to be embarrassed about i do it sometimes as well you know it just makes tricky things easy sometimes so i'm definitely a big fan of hand sewing and i think you should definitely try that as well if you're having some type of struggles using a sewing machine for the fabric and speaking of stabilizing, another tip to stabilizing those tricky fabrics is to use good old spray starch. I love it for knits and I know a lot of people also using with big success when you're working with slippery chiffon and that sort of uh, silky fabrics they really like it. Because the good thing about it is it disappears in the wash, it doesn't really affect the fabric for the most part. But of course do a sample first and see that it washes away. Of course, this is not working for garments that you can't wash in water, but luckily a lot of fabrics can be washed in the water. And if you can, you should definitely examine using spray starch. It does wonders when you're doing um, the sort of tricky detailing, for instance. You know, it just gives the, the fabric enough stability, for instance, to turn um, a stretchy knit into um, a patch pocket, for instance. Just a little spray starch, nice pressing stitch it in place and you'll actually be able to do a nice beautiful patch pocket on a knit fabric just using some spray starch. 